Dear brothers and sisters, we are continuing to talk about the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the last khutbah, we had talked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam working as a shepherd to earn his own living despite the fact that he could have depended on his rich family and his rich uncle. But he wanted to be a man even when he was a child. He wanted to feel independent. He wanted to expose himself to these hardships of the daily life in the workforce. He went out and he endured the sun, he endured the risks and dangers by being out in the wilderness, uh, being exposed to bandits, being exposed to robbers, to wild animals, sleeping uh, at night in the wilderness. Something that I bet if one of us was asked even to go outside this city and just sleep one night outside in the fields, I myself, I cannot do it. You just think about it. Even if you have a tent, go outside in the wilderness like this and try to sleep. You will not sleep all night. But subhanAllah, such, such uh, incidents uh, that happened in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Allah was preparing this personality to be a unique personality from all aspects. And we mentioned in this Arabic khutbah as well, inshallah I'll go back to a, a story of Bahira, but before I go to the Bahira story, Prophet when he was 14 and f or 15, his uncles and his whole tribe, Quraysh, was an ally of another tribe called Kinana. And there uh, started a, a war between Kinana and another tribe called Hawazin. Quraysh went to help out Kinana. They were their allies in Jahiliya in the pre-Islamic era. And it was a tradition of the people at the time that when there's a war, all men and even all boys go out for that war. And this is how they became so brave and so strong. They are totally different people. The way they were raised, the way they lived are to is totally different from the way we are raised and the way we lived. So Prophet Sallallahu his uncles take him out to this battle at age 14 or 15. And he was too young to actually physically fight. But his job in this battle was to go around in the battlefield and collect the arrows and bring them back to his tribe and to his uncles and to his family to throw the arrows again. Again, there's so much danger, danger involved in this because anyone, anyone can strike him while he's collecting the arrows. Um, a stray arrow may come and kill him. To live this kind of incident, regardless of who was right and who was wrong in this battle, but to go through such an experience, undoubtedly gives the Prophet Sallallahu so much courage and steadfastness and fortitude that he would never be shaken by similar incidents that may happen later on in his life after he becomes a prophet and then the whole of Arabia become, become his enemy. He's seen things like this. He has seen what happens in battles and battles at the, at the time people fought with knives, fought with, with swords, spears and arrows and it was brutal. The kind of injuries that happened at the time were very scary Im images and he went through all this at a young age. You can imagine how much his personality was strong and how much courage he had growing up to be a man. Before this incident, when he was even maybe nine or 10, nobody knows exactly how old he was, but he also went on trips to Asham, from going from Mecca all the way to the area of Syria and Jordan and Palestine in trading with his uncles and his tribe. And in one of those trips, before they reached Asham, they met a monk, his name was Bahira. And this monk, according to the narrations, and there's some controversy about the authenticity of that narration. Imam al-Dhahabi, one of the eminent imams of hadith, considers it a false uh, historical report. While Imam al-Albani, Imam ibn Hajar, think it is authentic. But Imam ibn Hajar feels that the details included in the story might not all be authentic. But the fact that Bahira, the monk, who was a Christian monk, worshipping in northern Arabia, the fact that he has met the Prophet Wasallam, we can conclude that this incident did happen. But the details of which, we don't know very clearly or we cannot be 100% sure about. And the reason I mentioned that this definitely happened is that there is a story of a monk, his name was Bahira, mentioned in the books of the Christians. This was a famous 
righteous person in the history of Christianity. I think his name was Sergius, but his nickname was Bahira. And he wrote a book. It's called The Apocalypse of Bahira. Yes, his name was Sergius, the monk, monk Sergius. He lived originally in northern, he lived originally in the desert of Sinai, near Mount Sinai, that's where he worshipped. But then he saw a vision, and that's mentioned in his book, not in Muslim sources. But the fact that totally independent sources from totally separate nations mention the same name of Bahira, and that this man eventually also lived in northern Arabia, indicate to us that probably this story of Bahira that was narrated by our historians did take place. So this Bahira sees an image or a vision at night when he's sleeping that there would be a kingdom that will be established or rise from Arabia and that this kingdom will conquer the Persian and the Roman uh, kingdoms. So he went out from Sinai to warn his, yeah, his uh, fellow Christians and to even to warn the, king, warn the kings of Rome that there's an imminent danger coming from Arabia. And then he went into Arabia, he says, to call people to worshiping God. He mentioned that in his book. This is not from Muslim sources. He mentioned in his book that he uh, found Arabs worshiping different kinds of gods. Some of them worshiped trees, some of them worshiped stones, some of them worshiped demons. And he says he called them to worship God and to follow the faith. Of course, the Christian faith. And I mentioned last khutbah that the Christian faith is not the faith of tri uh, Trinity that we see today. This was not the predominant Christian faith for the first maybe four or five hundred years. This was not the predominant Christian faith. There were many other Christianities and there are many books now published when those books and manuscripts of these early Christian groups surfaced and showed the different beliefs that different Christian groups had. Many Christian groups and probably the predominant Christian belief was that they only believed in the one God, Allah, and they believed that Isa السلام, was his messenger. And I mentioned in the last khutbah, at least in the Arabic khutbah, read about the Ebionites. Uh, also uh, read about the follow followers of Arius. Those people were Unitarian Christians. They worshipped the one God and they considered Isa as his messenger. This concept of Trinity only developed after the first 300 years and when the followers of Trinity joined hands with the emperor of Rome, only then that concept started spreading because they oppressed all the other beliefs of Christianity. The authentic beliefs of Isa that, that were taught by Isa, Jesus, were oppressed and its followers were persecuted, killed, crucified, their books were burned, even the they issued edicts prohibiting the ownership of such books. Those books went to, into hiding and the, follow, the true followers of Isa went into hiding and so on. So we don't know, Bahira, was he a Trinitarian or was he one of the Unitarian Christians? But Unitarian Christianity continued even till today. Even today you find Unitarian Christians. So there has always been one trajectory in Christianity and it was the predominant one, but then it became... Uh, became uh, more and more diminished as time went on because of the dominance of the Trinitarian Christianity, the Pauline Christianity, the one who, the man who basically changed the religion, the one who changed the religion of Isa alayhi salam, the false prophet, Paul. He's definitely a false prophet. He never was a disciple of Isa. He was never a student of Isa, never met Isa, never liked Isa, never liked his students or disciples. He persecuted them. He acted as a spy against them, but then he comes and claims 25 years after the rise of Isa alayhi salam, he comes and claims that as he was walking towards Damascus, he saw a vision, he saw Isa alayhi salam himself coming to him and calling him to Christianity and inspiring him with a new faith about the nature of Isa alayhi salam and why he was crucified and so on. And that's how he developed these concepts of crucifixion and the concept that he was crucified to, for, the, for, the, for the sins, to, to remove the sins of humanity. And then he developed the concept of Trinity and the divinity of Isa salam. And so all these are new concepts that were never there before. And he, and he also abolished the law of Musa, the law that was followed by Isa salam and all the prophets of, 
uh, the prophet, prophets of Bani Israel, the Israelite prophets, they all followed the law of Musa. Isa السلام, himself says that he did not come to abolish the law of Musa, but he came to fulfill it. And he mentioned that until the day of judgment, there will always be the law and not even a single letter of this law can be removed. This is the saying of Isa alayhi salam. But Paul had a totally different, had a to totally different view and he changed Christianity from its foundation. He invented a new religion. Despite the fact that Isa alayhi salam himself warned of, warned of false prophets calling people in his name. And Paul did call people in his name to a false religion. I'm sorry, I went away from the story, but Bahira did went, go into Northern Arabia. Then he told the Arabs about their future, that they will become a kingdom, they will become powerful, they will conquer all these other nations. And then they were so happy with him that they built him a small uh, uh, hut to live in and worship in, and they dug him a well, and that's where he lived. Basically, the story that's mentioned in our source is that, is that when the Prophet ﷺ went with his uncles uh, towards the Sham, they met with this monk called Bahira, and he warned uncle the, Prophet, uh, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ not to take him any further because he was afraid, because there are news that there will come a prophet from Arabia that people may sense that he is that one. He got that kind of sense. And then I mentioned some other uh, hadith about people getting a vision that inshallah will continue in the, inshallah, next khutbah because the time has already come to an end.